Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today I've got a quick round in my Takal for you. And uh, this is the setup. I am playing with Main Battery Mode 3. I am actually using steering gear and concealment. So it's a long distance kiting kind of build because this is a Japanese heavy cruiser, Hatia 8, and uh, that's kind of what they do. <laughs> and the captain is set up is set up uh, for that as well, uh, specifically around the exploit weakness and uh, around using precise aim at long ranges. And we are playing base capture on Silent Shoal. It is, yeah, it is a tier 8 game, although the only tier 7 on the enemy team is still Lyon, whereas on our team we do have a Miyoko and at tier 7. But uh, we are fighting a uh, Sanzang, <laughs> tier 8, uh, I think it's a tier 8 Saipan or something, uh, Black Bismarck, Atlantico, everybody's favorite, Lyon, Tallinn, Rabin, and Benson. Now, the Atlantico is not so much of a problem if you're in a Japanese heavy cruiser, because you can literally just burn them down from outside their secondary range. And uh, you've got some torpedoes to use if the opportunity allows it. Obviously, the carrier is a bit more of an issue, because the Japanese cruisers are not the most maneuverable or not having the best AA either. So... You generally do want to focus on the assault cruiser role. You want to focus on playing long range uh, and on dealing damage, basically. So, but we might we, we might synergize with the friendly carrier if we can if we can manage to get uh, if we can manage to get a fire somewhere going. That's something we might be able to exploit. But I want to potentially, if I can, uh, stay outside the spotting range of the enemy carrier to make sure that the enemy team doesn't know that I'm coming. And uh, sail down the flank. There's only one destroyer, but we have we may have some some shots at uh, that destroyer if the opportunity arises. But uh, with the concealment build, you can quite you can stay out of initial detection quite a bit. And there's the Benson, so that's a good first target. Uh, so let's get the precise aim up and shots out. High explosive is the weapon of choice here, mostly on Japanese heavy cruisers, because the high explosive is just really really good on these ships. Uh, against destroyers, you can uh, use armor piercing because the pen armor piercing penetration is relatively low. But I now have an Atlantico uh, to shoot at, and I am within secondary range of the Atlantico, of course, because I'm under 10 kilometers away, and I'm spotted because I have started opening up the Benson. But uh, that's okay. We'll we'll work on the Atlantico, see if we can get some fires getting uh, some fire started of ourselves. And uh, she is uh, inside torpedo range, so I am just waiting for the. Uh, just waiting for the uh, for the the main gun salvo to, to pass by and now I'm just gonna get myself outside secondary range I have dropped the torpedo slightly behind that's because Atlantico looks like she's in reverse and now I'm just gonna sail away from the Atlantico just to get outside the secondary range now I have lost quite a bit of hit points here but again this is an Atlantico this is to be expected and uh, we might get two torpedoes on target here if we can manage to get a flood. Yep, there we go for perma flood and perma fire. And now we are just going to damage over time uh, the Atlantico down. Uh, and she is already coming under concentrated fire from multiple from multiple ships here. So uh, and has now stopped actually trying to shoot at us because you know it's quite ineffective if you're if you're trying to shoot at. Uh, if you are trying to shoot at uh, at a kiting away Japanese heavy cruiser. So we'll try to roll up this flank. Uh, we're, we're even on kills right now, even on score. But I think uh, that with the help of, with some help from the Kansas, we should be able to, to take down that Atlantico and then focus on, uh, focus on the, on the, uh, on the enemy defensive ball in their capture circle. Okay, Kansas takes down the Atlantico, but not without taking a severe beating here. Because she, the Kansas has not player has not learned that you do not do this in secondary range of an Atlantico. So he's on triple perma fire, and uh, there was really no need for that. <laughs> Just stay at longer ranges. But then again, it's a Kansas; it's not the fastest of ships. So if he wants to actually make any kind of headway, then uh, that's going to be necessary. We're still equal on points, but the enemy team is turtling now in in their uh, in their capture circle. Unfortunately, the friendly Miyoko has died, and there's a full health Black Bismarck, so that's going to be our first customer. And we are at uh, we were still undetected because the carrier is busy on the other side, but uh, we'll, we'll start trying to set some fires, and also start trying to draw some fires. Yep, Bismarck has immediately switched fire to me, 
So let's turn in and see if we can get, uh, we don't want to engage a Black Bismarck at close range, obviously. But um, I can't remember if this thing has, has sonar. Either way, we will try to get some torpedoes away. Japanese heavy cruisers are quite quick. So uh, we will try to, Black Bismarck is reversing, so we will try to uh, try to do something about the flank here. And that's a fire on the Black Bismarck. Is he damaconing? We do have to do, do have to deal now with a carrier coming in. And the Black Bismarck does not seem to be moving, so let's drop the torpedoes in the general direction of the Talon, the Black Bismarck, and that Sanjang. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. And then we'll turn the ship around, because uh, we are still within torpedo range. Obviously have to wait out the, uh, the Black Bismarck Salvo, and then send a second drop of torpedoes in his general direction. And uh, we've got landed a couple more on a couple more on the Talon, and now we're relatively low on hit points, so it's about time to get out of here. Unfortunately, uh, the Kansas has died, who would have extremely been extremely useful here as a destruction. And uh, with a carrier in play, I have no way to hide. I'm thrown out of map, but even if I hadn't, uh, you'd have absolutely no chance in a Japanese heavy cruiser to defend yourself <laughs> in that regard. So uh, we still managed to we still managed to get a hit. We still managed to get a flood, but um, uh, yeah, that that Fantasque is not going to be able to do so, to do very much from out there. And um, yeah, the Black Bismarck is on perma flooding still from. A uh, friendly carrier, instead of dealing with the Harbin, is uh, sending his planes to die in the um, in the death ball over there. So yeah, uh, you may come to regret that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, <laughs> okay. Anyway, Aya uh, yeah, the is about to take out the Fantasque, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. But this is sort of how you want to play uh, a Japanese heavy cruiser: long range, setting fires, setting floods. And uh, I've done 104,000 points of damage. Unfortunately, the one thing that uh, Japanese heavy cruisers can't do is uh, carry the team <laughs> if it needs to be carried that hard. <laughs> because they are assault cruisers. They are pure assault cruisers. They're damage dealers. Uh, they, are, uh, they, they don't have much utility outside that. So if you're facing an enemy carrier, there's not an awful lot you can do uh, against, uh, against it. So uh, you do somewhat rely on your team to, uh, to not goof off too much <laughs> in, order to, in order to win a battle. But uh, well, uh, sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them, but you're also coming out with, <laughs> coming out with a sufficient amount of damage to uh, you know, still be able to look, your, to look, at, look, look yourself into, in the mirror. And there goes the Shokaku, and I'm pretty sure the enemy carrier is going to take the MVP here. Uh, yeah, I am not surprised, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, carriers, if you're not in an AA cruiser, <laughs> carriers are no fun. <laughs> but all in all, uh, high caliber battle star, 104,000 points of damage. I think we've done what we could, really, and if you look at the... If you look at the, the actual numbers, I've done more damage than the next three ships in my team combined. So that tells you something. But still, it's, a, it's, a, it's fun. And I, really, I honestly say, I have to say I really enjoy the Japanese heavies uh, and these cruisers. I think they are often a bit underrated. And I'll definitely have to do reviews of the higher tiers as well. So that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.